Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. Okay, so today we're going to talk about wavetables, uh, specifically the wavetable module that is included in Contact 6. Contact 6 came out, I don't know, about five months ago, something like that. And I haven't really talked about it very much on this channel because almost nobody owns it. Uh, I did a poll about I don't know, about a month ago, and I asked people, like, what version of Contact are you using? Mostly because I wanted to figure out what library to develop for, and, like, nobody owned Contact 6. It was, like, 20% or 30%, something like that. But anyway, I own it, and I thought it would be fun to kind of play with all the new features. Um, you know, a bit of time has passed since the release, so, you know, some of you at least will be able to get something out of this. And if you don't own it, maybe you could just, you know, see what it has to offer. Specifically, I am interested in the Wavetable module, Wavetables are something that's like super popular in the EDM music production world and maybe not so popular with like sample-based uh, instrument producers. So uh, yeah, uh, this should be fun. So I'm going to do something a little bit different in this video. Uh, normally when I start one of these, I open up Contact and we make a new instrument right off the bat. We can't really do that in this case because in order to use Contact's uh, wavetable support, you actually need to have some wavetables, which are basically these specially designed wave files that contain uh, wavetable data. Um, and Contact doesn't actually provide you with any way of actually making the wavetables. It just lets you play them back and then manipulate them with all the different built-in effects. So. So what we're going to use is a piece of software called Serum, which is like the de facto standard. Uh, Serum is, I think it's like $200, something like that, but you can rent to own it through Splice, so it's like actually $9.99 a month. Uh, I'm, I'm doing that, the rent to own thing. Um, yeah, so I'm going to load it up and you can see what Serum is. Uh, and that's actually how we're going to generate the wavetables that we're then going to bring into contact. So here we go. By the way, Serum is like a fantastic synthesizer. It has a lot of the same features that Contact has. Uh, the only difference is that instead of specializing in sample playback, it specializes in wavetables. It has a lot of the same modulation options. Uh, it has the whole effects panel. It's really pretty cool. So I've got it up on the screen now, but actually I should probably talk a little bit about how wavetable synthesis differs from traditional synthesizers. So let's take a traditional synthesizer like uh, Synth1. By the way, if you don't have Synth1 on your computer, you probably should. It's fantastic. It's been around forever, sounds great. Synth1 is just like this great classic synthesizer and it's completely free. Uh, so if you look at this, uh, this is, you know, it's configured just like, you know, any hardware synthesis like a Moog or whatever. Uh, it's got basically two oscillators. Actually, I think it has three because it has a sub oscillator. But basically you choose between these different waveforms and then uh, you choose your waveform and then you apply some kind of like filters and envelopes and modulation with LFOs and things like that. And all of those things, the envelopes and the modulation uh, together uh, create the patch and create the sound of the patch. Wavetable synthesis is exactly like this. The only difference is that instead of starting with just one waveform, like a square wave or a sine wave or something like that, like you would in like classic synthesis, you're starting with a whole bunch of different waveforms that kind of morph into each other. Um, if you think about like an acoustic instrument like a, a violin, I always use the violin as an example because I'm a violinist. Uh, if you think about an instrument like the violin, you can look at it in a waveform editor and you can isolate like one cycle of a violin playing. And if you were to take that and loop it over and over again, it wouldn't sound anything like a violin. And the reason is the violin's waveform is changing as the player plays. Serum and other wavetable synthesizers aim to bring that kind of like dynamic morphing quality that actual acoustic instruments have to the world of digital synthesis. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what we're doing. So when we say wavetables, we're actually talking about like a series of waveforms that can be kind of like morphed between. To give an example of how wavetables work, uh, I've just picked a random uh, preset from Serum uh, and we can look and there uh, on the screen is a depiction of the waveform that it's going to use if I just press down on the key. And as you can hear, it's completely static. And here we've got a position knob, and what that does is it cycles us through the wavetable. So as we said, we've got not just one waveform to work with, but like a whole series. In fact, if I click here, you can see a 3D representation of all of the different waveforms. And if I press down on the key and then I move the position knob, you can hear the waveform subtly changing, and that's kind of the power of wavetables. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to create a wavetable that we can then use in contact. So first I'm going to blank this out. And uh, by default, uh, Serum comes loaded with, I think it's a triangle wave. Yeah, it's a little harsh. And we click the little pencil and it brings us into the waveform editor. And then we can kind of just draw.
seems like no matter what I do, it's always like really harsh sounding. Okay, so that's gonna be our first frame. And then I'm gonna click the plus and get another frame. Okay, so I've got two waveforms. Uh, it's possible to have up to 256 different frames. I don't feel like drawing 256 frames. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this morph crossfade option. And what that does is it basically says, treat frame one as the beginning, treat the second frame as frame 256, and then just morph between them. So now if we were to go back to the main panel uh, and click here, you can see that it's kind of interpolated between the two frames. So that if I press down on a key and then move the position knob, we can dial in any midway point between those two extremes. Okay, so that's, you know, it's pretty harsh sounding, but that's my first wavetable. Okay, so I'm gonna export it now and import it into contact. So click the pencil, uh, select both of these frames, do export all as 32 bit, and I'm gonna call this Dave Harsh Synth. I was fooling around with this last night, so I'm also gonna export a bunch of other presets that I made. Okay, so I've exported everything. I think we're kind of ready to do some stuff in contact. So I'm going to load up contact six and say goodbye to Serum. And we're gonna click new. And this is going to be very familiar to anybody who's ever made a contact instrument. Yeah, I'm gonna pull in one of my wavetables. The first one I'm gonna pull in is the first uh, sample that I made and I'm gonna stretch it across the entire range. Uh, and if I press down on a key, doesn't make any sound because I have actually not switched it into wavetable mode. The way you switch it is just by clicking the drop down in the source module to wavetable, it's a new option. And already if I play, So yeah, um, that is the same position knob that you would find in Serum. It sounds exactly the same. This here is a warp mode. I don't exactly know the way warp modes work. I know that they can make things sound really harsh and gritty, uh, which is you know pretty appealing, especially for like dance music and stuff. If I go to sync one, for example, and then I start playing with the form knob. Uh, form and position are the main knobs that you're going to be modulating and working with. Uh, phase basically just has to do with what portion of the waveform you start with, even though you know it's obviously gonna be looping over and over again, but it has to start somewhere. The final knob is phase randomizing. Uh, it's not something that most people are gonna play with, but like if you have a unison effect or something where you're triggering two or three of the same oscillator playing the same note at the same time, you might wanna have them have different phases and the randomization uh, helps with that. I think I'm gonna try to make this a mellow patch and not have it be like a super abrasive like dance patch. So I'm gonna turn off the phase warping. So yeah, let's try to modulate the position knob. Uh, I'm gonna right click here and select external sources and velocity. And I'm gonna turn this all the way down. So the default position is kind of like mellow. And then if I hit hard, then it's going to go for that more abrasive, louder sound. Okay, I'm gonna put some delay on this because it's a little bit dry sounding. And I'm gonna actually go with the old school delay, not the new replica delay. Maybe put some chorus on it, get it to sound a little bit bigger. So yeah, I'm gonna save that and uh, yeah, let's make some more patches. Okay, time to make another patch. Uh, so I'm gonna begin exactly the same way. I'm gonna do new instrument. I'm gonna go into the mapping editor. And this time I'm gonna pull in a different wavetable. I'm gonna pull in this uh, warbly tape organ one that I also exported out of Serum. And if I hit the key, oh, it actually sounds like a patch a little bit, uh, but I'm actually gonna switch it over to wavetable. You can hear how it sounds. You can hear all the different frames. Okay, so in the last of these that I did, uh, I only modulated the position. This time I kind of want to play with some of those phase warping um, modes. So I'm going to actually just try out a few of them. Let's boost the volume. Mm, it's pretty mellow. Ooh, pretty harsh. Okay, let's try to modulate that. So I'm actually gonna put an LFO on it and see how that sounds. Maybe let's have the LFO. Yeah, maybe even less.
Okay, let's try something else. Actually, let me try uh, maybe a step modulator. I almost never use the step modulator, but I'm trying to get more into it, and we want the step modulator to be modulating the form. Okay, we're getting closer. Uh, I want this to be synced to eighth notes. Okay. Um, I'm on kind of like a step modulator kick lately, so I think I'm actually going to take another step modulator and put it on the amplifier on the volume. Make kind of like a trance gate. Okay, let's add some effects. So there's this new thing that uh, also comes with Contact 6, which is uh, the replica delay. Uh, Native Instruments gave out the replica delay for free like three or four Christmases ago, and it was like a standalone VST plugin, and now they've just kind of like bundled it in contact. Um, I think I like that one better. Cool, uh, I'm gonna save this patch, I think. Not bad for a couple minutes of work. Again, all I did was I modulated these two parameters. It's not very complicated. There aren't that many parameters that you can work with. Uh, it's basically these three that really affect the sound. Um, and everything is gonna come down to, you know, how you can creatively modulate those parameters. Okay, I'm gonna play with this a bit and see what other kinds of patches I can come up with. Okay, so I've been playing with this for a little bit and I've come up with like six pretty cool sounding things. There's this one which I've called Distant Violin. There's Epic Talker, which is the one I came up with before. There's another one in which I kind of did that like sequence modulation thing. Then there's this one which is kind of like 80s keys. It's very responsive, really feels like a keyboard instrument. There's another sequence modulated one. I was really on a kind of like a modulator kick with this. And then finally there's that first patch that I did. I happen to notice that as I was fooling around with this and I was like making loops just to kind of like demo these, I guess I'm always playing in the same minor key and the first three of these kind of work together and it almost sounds like I meant to do this. Obviously these all sound super 80s. Part of that is wavetable synthesis, but part of that is the specific wavetables that I happen to have like made in Serum. Uh, but yeah, not bad for a few minutes of work. As you can see, the wavetable synthesis in Contact is not that complicated. There are only a few knobs that you really need to worry about. The main thing is that you need wavetables in order to make the sounds in the first place. Uh, you can download wavetables all over the internet. There are like a million sites. If it works in Serum, chances are it's gonna work in Contact as well. I'm gonna upload these instruments uh, so that you can download them. Obviously, they only work in Contact 6. Um, this isn't a product. These don't have like skins or knobs or anything. It's pretty raw stuff, but maybe it'll help you get, you know, the ball rolling with your own wavetable instruments. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much the functionality. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If you like this sort of video, remember to hit subscribe. Um, yeah, see you next time.